Hi, my name is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to talk about Nasara pricing and wages. Coming right up. So I do these videos because I start getting questions. Okay, so in Nasara, if you haven't watched this, by the way, some people will click on this and say, you didn't answer this question. I'm like, trust me, I answered it in the playlists. I literally have playlists of setup information. I have interviews in there. I have another one that talks about some biblical issues. So it's really kind of interesting when you look at that. It, and then there's a whole Nasara shorts. It's not going to exactly be short, but we'll, we'll try to make it not too long with that too. So let's talk about pricing and what happens. Okay, so first off, we have to give you a little background. So when we are in a fiat currency, this is so weird for people because they don't understand it, okay? Fiat currency actually means that it's in a process of going through. So you are here, the IRS gets your money, then it moves into the treasury. Now, we go, wait a second, hold on, we didn't hear about that one. Well, guess what? You ask this question, people ask this question all the time. Where does our money when we send it to the IRS go to? Well, guess what? It never goes in any place toward roads or anything else. That's sales tax, schools, property tax. I mean, I could, we could just go through the tax points and you go, so what is it going for? It's going toward the debt structures. So then we have, it goes through the treasury because it has to get legalized in this point. Then it moves in to the Fed. Now, one of the things that's so powerful about what happens to the Fed here is that these private people, including the Queen of England and several of them, will take out 6% of everything that comes into the Fed from this whole process. And so you're talking about every dollar that comes in, which tends to be anywhere from about $1.2 trillion yearly. So $1.2 trillion come in, and then it shoves it over to the U.S. Mint, and then back into your hands. But guess what happened? The fiat dollar is built upon the confidence in the system. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Do you think that I'm competent to handle your car repair issues? Now, some of you are going, I don't know if you have ability to do car repairs. I would answer to you, no, you don't want me to touch your car. Makes sense? Okay, so if, if we're talking about confidence in the system, how much confidence do you, have you had in most governments? Right? How much confidence have you had in your lawmakers? How much confidence have you had in the CEOs and all these big, big companies? Okay, so if your confidence is low in that, your confidence is also low in the system. But yet this is where you get all your money. But this is how they steal it from you. This is the powerful point. It's in the fiat system. And so what happens is your dollar goes in and then your dollar comes back out to you and it, the system moves in into this whole thing again because the thing is not backed by anything. It's backed by confidence. And you ask this question, how do they get away with this? Well, this the reason why I did it is a circle here is because, in essence, the fiat system built into the Fed by these, by these big corporation kind of circumstances and the banking systems is a money laundering system. 
When you get this, this point, this is powerful. And most people go, it can't be this way. Yep, it is. There's a bunch of people that have talked about this. Many economists who talk about ending the Fed. Well, guess what? This is where it comes from because they understand the structure. The question that keeps coming up is that we have this separate conversation over here. Sorry, my little system is all hooked up there funny. And when we go into a gold back standard, by the way, that's the Nasara thing. And don't tell me that you think this is the mark of the beast. It's not mark of the beast, okay? I understand that, that very well. It's not mark of the beast. It is nationalistic. It's not international. Of course, every single money source out there has to negotiate with the Zim or, you know, Zimbabwe's uh, currency and Vietnam's currency and all those. There's transfer rates that are going to happen. OK, lots of people know more about that than me. I'm not going to even pretend to be that that expert on that. There's a whole cool things that are coming out. But they all, I mean, you're, you know, there are monies that go from Britain to America and America over to South America and blah, blah, blah. You know, just pick the places that are happening. But here's the point. This is how they devalue the currency because we have these interesting things called devaluation, which is exactly what happens every single time that occurs in here because your debt is placed inside of the circle. So right now we're around $29 trillion. And when you're at $29 trillion, we're approximately 177% of debt to income. And you go, wait a second. The income is the IRS taxing of you. The outcome or the outgoing ugly debt that you still have to pay every month is 177%. And as if you've listened to my other videos, you know this one point. If you're at 30 to 50%, normally about 50%, if you go to bankruptcy court and you show your debts, now debts are not your, your electricity bill every month, okay? Your debts are something that are from your past, credit card. You had a big credit card payment. You know, you had to buy something big, $10,000 thing, $3,000 thing, but you can't pay it back. So you're paying on it monthly and, and working with the interest in the whole process, right? Well, that's what debt is in this, this area here. And you ask this question, how come we haven't fixed the debt? Because they don't want to fix the debt. The debt is inside of the dollar. And that's how they can steal just little bits of it every single year. But what happens in this situation when you are at 177% debt to income, you ain't got enough money coming in to cover your debts. The interest has to be incredibly low. We're talking about interest rates of 0.75 or, or, and if they even inch it up a hair to 0.875 or something kind of crazy. I mean, it blows up half of the system. Okay, I can't get a loan for 0.875, right? Does the, you get the idea? Or, you know, you under, you're starting to see this. We're not even at 1% in interest through the Fed. And the Fed is the one that sets that rate. And so you kind of see this and you see it's a circular point. This is the problem. Then we get into these other things called inflation. And inflation is just how much your money reduces. Inflation means that you've taken your money and you've reduced it. So it means that your dollar goes lower. Does that make sense? So when you used to have that $1 that you, you had, and in the past, you were able to buy certain number of things with it, okay? Then you buy that same $1, take that same dollar, and you can buy less with it over the years. And this is why 
there's this interesting part. Oh, let me erase this thing over here for a second. Because most people struggle with this, this, this concept. So when the value of money, and I know you might have, if you've watched me before, I'm just going to talk about this again. When your value of money is down, the price goes up. That's why when my parents bought the first car I remember, it was 1976, it was a Ford Granada, right? And it was $5,000 new, and it was the most expensive car they ever thought about buying. They were freaking out about this. The house that they bought in, in I will tell you about this, in Parker, Colorado, bought this house, they bought it for, I wanna say, $50,000. They, they backed it off to $49,000 without the carpeting so that they could save some money because they really didn't have the money for that $49,000 loan. I mean, and you go, wait a second, $49,000. They sold the house years later for hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? I mean, and they built onto it and all these other things. And you go, how can the house or how can that car that used to be a $5,000 car now be, you can't get out of the dealership without $25,000 or $40,000 or whatever that, that circumstance is. And you're going, how can it go that way? It's because prices go up. But guess what? The value of your money has gone down and that's why they work this. And it's a, it's a steady balance. If you charge too much for something, no one can afford it. So that's why they have, they have um, financing rates that go from, it used to be a three-year note and there's a four-year note and a five-year note and a six-year note. And then, you know, they just keep moving it up there. But your value of your money has gone down and the price has gone up. Okay, so this is the problem. When you look at this problem and you say, what's going on? How do we fix the system? People say, well, there's two things. You could end the Fed, which is a lot like what Greece did in 2009. They were in a massive debt crisis. They didn't have enough money because 40% of every person in Greece was working for the government. That means they're not, pay, they're not paying as much and the government is taking on their burden to pay these people. And so what would happen is that people, they had no money to handle what they had out there. Their debt was up too high, okay, debt to income, and then the system crashes. Well, what happened to the rest of Europe? I mean, it caused panic and freak out mode for Germany and France and every other one that had to take on the debt because they were inside of the EU. And, and if America did this, people go, that's when you get hyperinflation. Well, guess what? We're running toward hyperinflation every time the idiots in Washington think that they're going to add in $1.9 trillion. These morons, they think that they can throw out that kind of cash. Where does it come from? From the IRS and from the Fed. They're just making more money and they just make this stuff up. And it's, this is not like newsflash. This isn't, and from you it might be newsflash, but guess what? Everyone knows it inside the system, but they don't know how to fix it. And that's where Nasara starts coming in. So I'm gonna erase this kind of thing and we're looking at this and I know you're kind of saying, huh? I get it, I hear what you're saying, but how do you fix it? Because all you see right now in your head is you see the problem. So I want you to just to think about this for a second. The problem in front of you is that you don't have enough money, right? You got too much debt, you have no answers for how to fix this. And by the way, lots and lots of people are emailing me the same thing. They're emailing, they're leaving comments, which I love you guys commenting. And you know, if you're nice about your comments, if you just be nice, because I'm, I'm just trying to share with this with you. No one's paying me to do this. I'd love it if you would go on to my Dr. Scott Young 
and you can donate to me as a monthly thing because I'm doing my own time and my own effort to share this with you because it's deep, deep in my heart, okay? Okay, no one's giving me anything to do this for you. But the heart of God is where I'm coming from. If you don't believe that, okay, you don't know me, okay? Now, the problem is, is that we have a lack of money and more debt than we can possibly come up with. And so guess what, what the system looks at? It says what's called hyperinflation. Okay, so when we see hyperinflation and you see economists talk about that, all they're thinking of is the Fed and the fiat and we don't have, it, we don't have a clue, what are we gonna do? And, and, and they're right, that is exactly where we could head. Now, guess what? I want you to calm down for a second. God already figured this out long ago. I've watched this in my own personal life and I've seen where I couldn't possibly pay something. And God said, chill, Scott. I got it figured out. Okay, because 2020 came along with the crazy circumstances that you all know about. I'm not going to say the word because it will mess up here, this, this whole thing. And the 2020 thing came along because on two sides of this, this coin was the Great Reset, which I get so frustrated when I see people, the Great Reset, well, guess what? That's exactly the direction that would happen if we go to the Great Reset, which brings us into our communist kind of viewpoint that this current administration wants us to kind of look at. And, and what they will do is that you will own nothing and be happy about it, but will give you a UBI, universal basic income will pay off some of your debts and, and you go, oh, thank you. But here's the other side of this. And I know for some of you, you can't see it. Okay, I get it. This calls, this calls for faith. Okay, the evidence is out there. There's so much evidence that many of you have reached out to me and shared your evidence. I love it when you do that, okay? You, you, I really ask you to kind of watch this and just let it seep down. Let it seep into your heart. And before you say, no, this can't happen, just sit, just sit for a second. Could it be the possibility? You see, who doesn't want this? Let me share with you who, who doesn't want this thing to be fixed. Bankers. I'm not talking about your local bank here. I'm talking about the big bankers. The big corp. Government. They hate all this idea because they, they run on this whole process. Mainstream media. All these people, they have no incentive because they're on the top of the food chain. They want the system to come in and this is what they've seen in their head, but it's already dead. You can't revive this craziness in here. Here's what we're happening. This is the problem. The fix is so fascinating. It's called Nasara. Now, if you've been around me, you've heard me do this, so I'm saying it in a different way. I didn't even prepare what I was gonna talk about today, by the way. Did you know that? I've just been having it in my head, so this is just gonna go on the fly here. Nasara comes into a gold-backed standard. DJT, you know what that is, you know who that is, actually brought in more gold through this ugly time frame than you can possibly imagine. Most people have no clue. The White Hats have been doing this for a long time, but they specially did it and saved it up because they knew the plans of the enemy. That's what happens. When you know the plans of the enemy, you can just do your job. So they brought in a gold back standard 
And then they said for the other nations around, so this is on the edge of this, the other nations signed up to a Jasara type agreement. It doesn't mean that that's going to be the word. It's just the way that we're looking at it this moment, okay? But this Jasara thing is the same thing. They're going to have their own precious metal standpoint, okay? So they're going to have their precious metals in um, places that have diamonds, great. If you have gold, great. If you have whatever is the wealth of the nation, that's already been figured out. And guess what? This stuff has already been, this has been figured out starting around 1963. And you're going, what? Yes, it's been in the work. And then it started to come into fruition in 2017. But I personally have been hearing about it. This has been happening. And I started hearing about it in 2014. And I personally didn't believe it. I couldn't believe that this could be happening. And what I realized is it was. Because what you're going to do with this fiat system over here is you're going to shove it off a cliff. You're just going to you're just going to shove it off the cliff and you go how can you do that? The simplest thing is the old idea of bankruptcy. So let's just give you and and you got to see how this this thing will work. So what we're seeing here, let's just skip over this because this is the stupid system. This is already dead. This side is already dead and no one wants to know it. So how do you take the the fiat currency and the debt go, go this way. So you have the fiat, okay, and you have the debt. And there's no answers for this thing. I mean, you are stuck. You have no idea what to do. So what you do is you use this classic point of bankruptcy. Now, here's what happens. To all the creditors, that are under here, they get nothing, nothing. Because they've been driving us into bankruptcy for a long time. So all of the elites that you think you owe money to, they're gonna get old big old fat nothing because there's an executive order 13818. And this executive order says that if you have crimes against humanity, it's fascinating because, by the way, it was done here, or excuse me, it was done in 2018. Sorry, to take that back. 2018, it was done for this one time frame. And if you have crimes against humanity, which I can calculate, and you and I can both calculate all the different crimes that they've done of the, these elites, you're going to get nothing. There's no way you can do this. And as I've talked about before, you can realize what they're going to go from is like have it walking in with their blue money, blue pill, and they're going to not walk out with any new red money, red pill. You're going, what? Okay, we'll go watch the Matrix series. It'll help you. So what they're going to do is they're going to walk in and they're not going to have any money. Now, the, what happens in the system in the system of bankruptcy is it goes, okay, we're going to give you a flush. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're just going to flush the system out. Well, how does that person recover? What that person is still doing is they still have income here. So they're going to have income without the debt because you've killed the debt here. So now they're in a positive realm. By the way, it's already coming because the wealth is, there's more wealth in this world than you can possibly imagine. And it's these people who have had it for, from us and they've stolen from us as I've just shared with you. So when the elites lose all of this money based upon this executive order, and I could give you a ton of other ones, the 14th Amendment, fourth, uh, the fourth um, section of the 14th Amendment talks about contract law. If the world doesn't know what they've been, how they've been stealing from you, guess what? You don't owe it. It's a contract law that's been known from the beginning of the Constitution, right? 
And, and, and the writers of the Constitution understood this system. They understood the grossness of this. That's why they hated central banks. One of my favorite presidents was uh, Jefferson, because he was the one decrying this whole system when Alexander Hamilton was going for the central banking system. And it keeps coming up over and over again. It's both sides of the aisle. Guys, don't just talk to me about Republicans. Don't talk to me about Democrats. It's both sides of the aisle. They're all inside of this thing. Now, we come over here to the system. Once you do bankruptcy, this is the key. Say, you don't owe this debt anymore. You'll move over here and have what we are now calling rainbow currency. Now, is it going to be that name? I don't know. I'm not going to sit there and worry. Don't get all worried about what kind of currency. Is it going to be red? Is it going to be purple? Is it going to be blue? Or is it going to be green? Is it going to be rainbowy color? I don't know. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that stuff because I don't have to worry about it. I've seen the evidence of this thing coming. No, there will be cash. Stop asking me if, if what happened. It's going to be a cashless society. That's the dumb stuff, okay? That's Mark of the Beast. That Mark of the Beast is going to happen down the road, okay? That's going to fulfill the word of God, but that's years from now, okay? We're in 2021. There's going to be cash, so you're going to be able to turn your cash in from the old fiat, the physical cash, and have cash with this new system. Because why? Because you, know, you don't have crimes against humanity yourself. You haven't been doing this stuff. So you're going to have the transfer mechanism in there. Now, if you're just talking about your particular fiat, well, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, there are transfer functions that are different bet between different kinds of countries, okay? the Zim, the Dong, the, you know, we could go on, the Iraqi Dinar, they're going to have different types of transfer functions. And I don't know all that stuff, okay? It's coming. It's coming down the road. Just be calm, okay? Can you still own gold? Of course you can. Gold has been owned ever since I mean, time immemorial, okay? People say, but, but you won't be able to own gold. Well, go own gold. If you want to own gold, that is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know that in 1901, making up a date, people owned gold. And yet they were had the, the currency of the time, the American dollar. And it was gold backed. They could own gold or they could have the, the, the physical dollar itself that was related to the gold, but not necessarily their gold. And the, the gold could go up and down in value and actually just kind of steadily go up. But their, their dollar wasn't necessarily going up. See, there's two different kinds of mechanisms. You have the physical gold that's going up in value and the, the, the dollar itself. That's not necessarily when it's gold back. Of course, it's super simple to do that. Do you catch me right there so far? Okay. I really recommend slow this video down and, and spend time with this, okay? Because it, it's, it's coming. And do I know everything? Of course I don't. I'm not gonna sit here and be a, an idiot and tell you I got everything down and you couldn't tell me something new. There's a bunch of stuff we don't know, but here's the key that I keep getting asked. So I gave you that setup so that you can see this part, okay. So when we're in the Nasara currency, coming up here soon, coming to a theater near you, here's what's going to happen. Number one, the value of your money is going to go up. And I mean up and up. So making up a thing. And this is, these are the people that really make me struggle. There are people in the world on Social Security that are making $1,200 a month. They, they're in um, retirement centers or it's an assistive living or a, probably more likely a nursing home. And this is all they live on. And then, you know, the, the, the home is taking the, the brunt of the money. There's nothing wrong with the home, okay? That's not the problem. 
The problem is, is how little that, that she's getting to get this kind of thing, okay? But now, but see, that was in the old fiat. But when our new, her money, this woman that is in this circumstance, when her money is valued more, what will then happen is that the prices of goods will steadily fall. So while she has $1,200 a month and she sees this changeover that happens, the prices of goods more. I mean, go down, which equals more buying power. Okay? So she now has more buying power with that 1200 bucks, so that her dollar goes farther. Now, the other caveat that we're, we're praying about, and we know that, that, that this is part of this, is that the seniors and people who are vulnerable, excuse me, sorry, seniors, and the vulnerable communities, sheesh, I can't spell that one. Holy cow. You're going, Scott, I can't read your handwriting. I get it. I have my doctorate, so that's what happens, okay? Seniors and the vulnerable, okay? What happens is that they have a certain fixed dollar amount, and what we've been hearing is that they're, they're going to have more given to them in that way. This is something that we see. Now, so she's having more, and let's just make up a number, and I'm not trying to, don't, don't quote me on this. Don't freak out when I say this, okay? But let's just say she now is sitting at $2,000 a month, okay? But her buying power is increased because her, the price is increased, I mean, decreased. The value of the money is more, which means that she ha now she has $800 more, let's just, in our example here, she's got 800 bucks more, but she's already been able to buy more because the price is lowered. Now, is she in a better situation? Almost instantaneously, because her value has gone down. Now, some of these prices of goods are going to take time. As we've talked about before, services and other things can go down. I think that there are going to be a lots of different ways that we could, and we could have conversation after conversation about things that would go up and down. Here's the next question or the next conversation, and this is the, the key element that people ask for, is wages. Now, let's skip over the vulnerable and the seniors that are getting a fixed income kind of thing. We're gonna make up the average salary of an American citizen is about $50,000. Now, I know some of you don't make that. I'm just telling you the average salary in America, okay? So if a, an average American is making something like this, okay? And again, put your own th number in there, okay? If the average salary is this, will wages go down? And this is the huge, huge question I keep Ask, get asked over and over again. And I'm going to say to you, it's possible. And you go, how could it possibly go down? Well, let me show you how, how it kind of works. Do, do you want to see this? So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of erase this so that you just have an idea of how business actually functions. Okay. So everyone has what's called revenue. Oh, sheesh. I cannot spell today. Sorry about that. Okay. So you have a gross revenue of a company. We're just going to make up a, a, a basic gross revenue of $200,000 a year for a small business kind of thing. Now, they all have expenses. This is to keep the lights on, okay? And then there are other expenses like your employees. Okay, so employees go in there, and let's just say we have a key employee that she is making, and we're just gonna focus on, on her for a second. She's making $50,000. That's not, not everything, but we're saying a key major employee is making $50,000. Now, depending upon what happens, 
let's say that they're selling items. Okay, so now we have to have, oops, sorry about that. Okay, now we have to have cost of goods sold. What the heck is that? That's what they buy the product for, okay? They have an iWatch, it costs you $100, you're gonna sell it for $175, okay? So if something is $75 to buy, the your revenue, so you're talking about your average sales price, we're just using as an example, is $150. Let's say you're only selling iWatches, just for the heck of it, okay? So you've got a profit margin of $75. Oops, 75 bucks, okay? Do you, do you catch the point? Now, inside of that $75, you have a number of people who buy monthly. You know, all the, pe the people that come into your store to do this kind of thing. And, and so we have a number of people. Now, here's what's happening on the back end of this, because I'm going to write it over here. On the back end of this, people's debts are going away. And we talked about the different debts. I'm not going to get into those debts right now. The second thing that's happening for these people is that their value of their money has increased. Okay? And for some people, their, um, maybe their paycheck has gone up. Okay? Because their pay is going to go up. Maybe. Maybe depending upon what there is. Maybe the senior populations that you tend to do the same exact thing with, okay? Just whatever that might be. Some of the, maybe some of their pay is going down, okay? So it's different depending upon the person. But here's the biggest issue. Their buying power has gone up massively for every single person because we've also killed away the IRS kind of thing. We have a sales tax that would happen. So they're, they're going to have, even if they have state sales tax, NASARA actually puts in there a federal sales tax. Now you're going, well, how? They're taking sales tax. But here's what sales tax is. And then there's city and local and everything else. What this is called, and it's, it's looked at as one of the most pure taxes. It's called a use tax. U-S-E. Sorry, if you want me to write it differently, I'll do it here for you again. A use tax. It means that the person that has more will use their money more, right? And the person that has less doesn't spend as much. You know, it's the most fair tax you can possibly come up with because we're going to use the example if someone is making less than $50,000, she is going to spend less of that of products. The person that makes a lot more than that is going to spend more. That's what happens and how it goes. And when you have more people who have more internal buying power, you put more people over on this side. So if the end number is, goes, this is the number of people that are buying per month, if you have more people that are making or have money because their buying power is up inside of the system, guess what it does? It's the perfect stimulation of the economy. The stimulation goes up so that this person, the business owner that's looking at the revenues, can see the revenues go up because what she's going to start watching is that these prices start coming down. Now, it takes a little longer for the cost of goods because now you're looking for the guy who builds that product. Okay, that's what went off camera there. Builds the product. She also has got to make the product and when it costs her less to do, she'll pass that savings on to you, which is competition. Competition isn't a bad thing. It actually drives you to do better things for your community. 
it's only the big companies that hate competition, and they love to steal that, that placement of the big competition. But small businesses live with competition, and you, as the consumer, want competition because it makes them doing the right, do the right thing. Because if you ain't doing the right thing, you're not going to get the business. Because people are going to go, you know what, you're a jerk. I don't want to deal with you. I'm going to go find someone who's going to get me that particular product that I need to do and do it better. So now as the pricing goes down to you, maybe it's 120 and 110 and 100. Let's just make, I'm making up numbers, okay? And the only way that she's able to see this is that now it cost her 50 and then 40. And so let's just say 40 is the final number and we have 100. Now remember, our profit margin was 75. But let's just say their price, prices go down, their average sales price goes down to 100 and her cost of it costs down to 40. So she has a smaller margin but how is she ever going to make up with it? Well, this is easy. More people are going to buy that thing. And when she has more people that go in, and so instead of 100 people coming into her place, now more people can afford it, so she has 150 people that come into the place. Now, if that thing happens, you got a smart business model. You're doing the right things. Do you see this whole point in this? Will the employee lose money? No. She's probably going to make that or more. She might even make more depending upon if the business expenses don't exceed what they're trying to do. So, so when she notices or a business owner person notices that her revenues go up and her costs are keeping a good margin for that, the employee is going to make good money. No, in that case, that employee maybe makes that. Maybe she now makes fifty-five thousand, because she wants to. The, our business owner wants to give her her main employee a benefit, saying, "You know what? You're awesome. You're doing a great job. We're making more money. We're doing better. We're ha helping more people. We're giving more, uh, doing more eye watches in that way. Whatever." I'm going to boost your salary up to fifty-five thousand, and it's good. Because what happens is that same employee is over here without the debts, watching the value of money, and she also has more buying power. And it becomes this rolling engine that goes down. Where could you possibly see the wages go down? Well, guess what? If you can't do this, if you don't know how to run the business very well, well, you might see uh, wages go down. One of the things that we see so much of the time in this fiat, scratch my back, I scratch your back kind of uh, idea is, is the disgusting part of it. When you drive into towns or you drive in your own town and you see a road crew, and I'm not just trying to beat up the road crew, but I'm gonna just uh, highlight this. You see the road crew and then they're never done. And you know, it. it you know, strangles the traffic and strang uh, creates car accidents and all this other stuff and messes up the businesses. There are businesses that, you know, they have road construction and no one wants to go over there because no one wants to drive through that, right? And so it decreases the number of people that go into that business and then that business goes out of business and that one goes out of business and that one goes out of business just because of road construction and they don't care because they get their money from the government who only gives it to you know, a certain number of places and then they're kind of doing a bad job. And see, they're, they're not rewarded in that system. But if you have competition, what's going to happen is going, you know what, people, we're gonna have the power in this whole structure. We, the people, will have the power to be able to say, you know what, if you can't do your job very well, we're gonna put another person in office who's gonna find a way to make this more efficient. And by the way, we're going to see a lot of that kind of stuff happening. And that's when we, and it's going to be, it's going to be annoying for some people because they don't like change. Change is coming, boys and girls. I'm just telling you, this kind of stuff is messing with you. And if you are on 
if you're just sitting there and just being fearful all the time and I don't know what's going to happen, just like be calm, chill out. You don't know what's going to happen, but God does. He's got it figured out already for you. Be ready at your line. Start to learn about money. Learn about how it works. Maybe God woke you up and has brought you to this great awakening to start a new business venture. I talked to two different patriots, one guy named John and another guy uh, named Chris. Chris, for a second, um, is, is a uh, THD, which is, means a theology degree. Chris has been having to work in all these other odd jobs and doing all this stuff. He's a great guy. He's, he's the hard worker that you look at. And yet his dream is to be in ministry, but he's been screwed out of all this stuff. So he can live in his, I'm so mad at the world and never get ahead. Or he can go, you know what, God, you've brought me to this time frame. What do you have in store for me? And go along the destiny and the cool things that God has for you. John over here is, is a musician that hasn't fully made it super big. But he has dreams about helping humanity. So he is creating this kind of mentality in here to help sex trafficked women and kids to make a difference. So he's utilizing the systems in here in this whole kind of process and the whole money valuation process to go further so he can help people in, in the world. And when he helps those people, they graduate from the program, whatever he's going to do, graduate from the program and they get a job right here. Get a job, they become paying members of society. They use the system, they're inside of this, making money, they create value. When you create value, you have more businesses, and it's a great thing. All of it is a great thing. It rolls down the hill. When everyone works in the same kind of a process, it makes it work. When we think about this, I'm going to end with this kind of point. If you're looking at a football team, football teams have the most amount, the best teams don't always win. It's not like the best player, the best wide receiver, the best quarterback. He doesn't always win. But what it is, is the team working together. When the offensive line works together with the running game, when the offensive line works together with the way the passing um, game works, it becomes that team effort. And it's not necessarily how good all of them are, it's how well that they work together. And when that happens, they win. Guess what's coming? We're, we have a system of this value that's going to happen. And if the people will get into the system and go, you know what, I want to add value in these businesses and these concepts, will you see your wages go down? I'm going to tell you right now, if you really want to do this right, your wages aren't going to go down. I'm speaking that in, as a prophecy directly, I'm sorry, directly from the heart of God. It doesn't have to go down because you can make it that way. So I appreciate you listening to me. I know you're going, okay, chill. <laughs> go back and watch this again. I want this to be information for you, but I'm trying to give you some really cool ways of thinking about it. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Leave some comments. Happy to look at that too. You can look at our Telegram channel at drscottyoung.com, at our Twitter channel at, at drscottyoung.com. I mean, our, our, our ministry is at drscottyoung.com. You can donate. Please help me because I'm trying to be able to give you great content. I want to be able to do that, but if you can donate to that, I really appreciate that. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.